As a herpetoculturalist, as well as a plant hobbyist, one of my favorite things is discovering new species of plants for vivariums by whatever means it might be, whether it be YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, I suppose, or just Pinterest. <sighs> Following the discovery of the plants is then researching and trying to find where I can get one. A lot of times they come from friends or other hobbyists like myself. So if you're anything like me, make sure you stick around for this video because we're going to be talking about my favorite plants for your vivariums as of November 2021 because I'm sure I'll make another video either next year or in like six months and update you guys with what my current favorite plants are at that point. Before we hop into the top 10 favorite plants list, make sure you click subscribe, like the video, as well as comment any questions questions, comments, concerns, or anything you have in the comment section down below. I answer every single comment. There could be some interesting information there. If you are looking for any reptiles or anything like that, fat tails, morning geckos, we also have hog noses. Make sure you check out the website, thejunglevault.ca. That is myself and my girlfriend's website that we started selling right now, mostly just reptiles, but that will expand in the future. There are also plants on the website, but if you're looking for something extra, make sure you hit me up on Instagram or I guess in the YouTube comments as well, as I can can ship plants across Canada and pretty much everything I mentioned on this list I do have available so do the thing. One last little tidbit in the video before we get started I do want to thank Troy very much for sending me this footage. I don't have quite the display vivariums that Troy has so thank you Troy for sending it over. If you guys haven't watched his channel and you're into dart frogs what are you doing with your life? Go check him out I'll leave his link down below. Thanks so much, man. Now, before we hop into the list, there's a couple things I need to address. Firstly, these are all plants that will do well in typical vivariums. And by vivariums, I mean like dart frog vivariums or tree frog vivariums because they're typically higher humidity, a little bit more moderate in the temperature scale and have decent airflow. And the second point to address is that these are in no particular order. It is just a list of 10 plants, not favorite to least favorite by any means. So with that being said, why don't we hop into the first three, which are all different species of philodendron. The first philodendron that I'm going to cover is the El Choco Red. Now this is a very coveted plant in the hobby. The price is astronomically high, but it does do great in vivariums. It loves the humidity, it loves the heat, and unfortunately the kind of downside to it, but also an upside, is that the leaves get absolutely massive. I have one that is about twice the size of my head, as well as a little seedling. The leaf size varies greatly amongst these plants, and is just a stunning addition to any larger size tank. Another beautiful attribute of this plant is the back of the leaves and where it gets its name, El Choco, red. As a seedling, the back of the leaves are nothing really to write home about. They're just kind of a typical philodendron looking leaf, but as they start to mature, they get a deep dark red coloration on the back of their leaves, and it is just a stunning plant to look at. Like if you have a frog or something that's hanging down on it and it springs it up and you just get like a flash of red, you can't go wrong. So if you can get one for a reasonable price, make sure you go pick one up. Continuing with the philodendron trend is varicosum, specifically in this case, the mini cultivar of varicosum. It is a beautiful addition to pretty much any tank. If you continually trim it back, it will stay relatively small leafed and you can propagate it very easily. For us tropical vivarium people, it does incredible. With that being said, the mini variation stays relatively small, maybe six to eight inches. I haven't actually grown one that big yet, but I have seen them get fairly large. So again, if you have a decent sized enclosure, like a 24, 18, 36, or anything that's 24 inches at least tall, it's gonna be a beautiful addition. It's just a classic tropical plant to incorporate in your dart frog build. And the final philodendron is one that is a little bit finicky, but I have several of them in stock. So if you're interested and wanna give it a shot and you're in Canada, let me know, uh, shoot me a message, email us, do whatever you need to do in order to get in contact with us. But it's the philodendron linhanine. It is a very corrugate pattern leaf that can get fairly large if you allow it. The downside, like I mentioned, is it does like intermediate temperatures as well as very high humidity. It does perfect in vivariums, but if you're trying to grow it as like a house plant or something like that, then it's probably not the plant for you. Some of the tips and tricks that I've learned for this guy is lower light and very high humidity, as I mentioned before. The lower light is really key. They do not like being in bright light. So again, if you're willing to take a risk, it's definitely one you should have in your collection. If you're a, if you're a plant hobbyist, then do it. Do it right now. Now, keeping with the aeroid theme, 
I'm going to incorporate one Anthurium that is relatively affordable and also quite readily available. And that is the Anthurium Erisigmoides or Erisimoides, something like that. It's a beautiful trilobate leaf plant that is just an incredible grower. The new growths come out like a tender pink to a purple coloration and then mature to a very dark velvety green leaf color with a ton of texture that you guys can see. If you haven't seen in the video of my buddy's giant 300 gallon vivarium, I'll leave the link in the cards above for you guys to go check out and you guys can make sure you skim through the video, well, watch the whole thing, but try and find the Aris that we talk about. In my opinion, the kind of nifty growth habit that it has, as well as the beautiful coloration of the leaves, the dark green is just hard to beat. It's definitely a must have plant. I don't really see it in a lot of plant YouTubers collections or anything like that. I would venture to bet that it is a little bit more popular in the actual vivarium hobby than it is with the plant people. Now jumping genera again we can move to the Monstera genus and I'm gonna cover none other than the Monstera dubia, one of the kind of quintessential vivarium plants. As a juvenile form it is a shingler so that means it basically sticks to a background or a log or something like that and sticks very tight to that surface and then as it matures it actually grows into mass massive fenestrated leaves with a beautiful texture to them. I've never personally had one reach maturity, but it would be one heck of an achievement if somebody here did. And if you did, send me a message on Instagram. I would really like to see that. I think what makes this plant so cool and neat to have in a tank is both the shingling growth habit as well as the coloration of the leaves. The white and green splotches add a lot of texture to the tank, so it's just another thing to look at in your vivarium. I would strongly recommend picking one up. They are going down in price right now, so that's kind of nice for those of you who are looking to add it to your terrariums. Now, what would be a My Favorite Plants video without some orchids? So I'm going to only include one orchid in this video. That is a terrestrial orchid or a jewel orchid, and that is called the Makotis Patola. This has been gaining popularity in the hobby as well as just in the plant collecting hobby for quite some time now, and it is a beautiful addition to any tank. I know a ton of people that are growing it extremely successfully. Unfortunately, I haven't had the same success. I kill almost every single one I buy. So far, it's going well with the one that I currently have. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed and hoping it does okay. I think it's pretty obvious what makes this plant so special. I think it's pretty obvious what makes this plant so special, and that is the beautiful, almost lightning look to the leaves. It is a stunning example of a plant, and just something that, like, how can you pass it up? Typically in lower light, it actually does way better and shows those colors more, because from my understanding, the reason why it has those colors is to actually reflect the light amongst the leaves, and actually absorb more photosynthetic energy in low light situations. Being a terrestrial orchid, that's smart. The next one I'm including is definitely a very rare and really no information known about it. It's not actually named yet, so that's probably why. I have it as Bignonia species pink Indonesia. I don't know if that's still true. If it's been reclassified, somebody let me know, but I have a beautiful example of this plant. In high light, it gets a very pink tone to the new leaves and grows very rapidly. If you guys are interested in it, I do have a bunch available, so hit me up, let me know. The leaf coloration, the leaf texture, the leaf size even is very awesome. It doesn't get too massive and it vines very easily. For those of you that like that kind of look in your tank, it's definitely worth adding. I currently have it growing in one of my grow bins. I haven't actually incorporated it into a tank yet. The tank you guys are sitting right beside it will be getting loaded with this stuff when the time comes. I will say it seems to enjoy slightly warmer temps and high humidity, so a small tree frog or a dart frog tank would be great for it. It's currently being kept at about mid 70s, so it's not super hot by any means, but it's definitely growing like a weed. It's just an all round beautiful plant that I think everybody should own. On to the next one, Biophytum sensitivum. Everybody should know that name if you're in the plant hobby, if you are in the dart frog hobby, you should definitely know this plant. It is essentially what is common commonly regarded to as like the mini palm tree. I know specifically in a couple of the tanks that I've seen that my buddy Troy has, they truly do look like miniaturized palm trees in your tank and it adds a really great sense of scale 
to even relatively small tanks. It's definitely one plant that I would strongly recommend picking up if you haven't got it already. And it is kind of cool that if you pinch the leaves, it does fold up like a sensitive plant. Even at nighttime, it will fold up. It's kind of cool. Another great thing about them is that they produce viable seed very readily. So once you have one, you'll probably have a bunch sprouting up all over your vivarium. So you can either move them to new vivariums, you can propagate it via seed and sell it to friends. You can do whatever you want with it, but I just figured I'd throw in that little tidbit of information for you all. It's definitely one plant that I would strongly recommend picking up. The second last plant on our list is the Solanum Ulanum Purple. It's a beautiful climbing plant that grows very well in vivariums. The entirety of the plant is purple with a beautifully fuzzy looking texture. It grows more of like a vine that will essentially attach to things and just keep growing up. It looks great in vivariums, and I'd highly recommend it to anybody who's looking for a little bit of color amongst the green jungle. This is a perfect one for you. The classic final vivarium plant, and that is the Margravia centenesi. That is kind of the holy grail right now of the Margravia genus, essentially. There's also the El Coca, which is really special and very expensive, but it is much slower growing, so I'm not adding that into the list. The Margravia centenesi is also known as the rainbow Margravia. The new growths are bright red, and then they slowly fade to a green color through the whole color wheel of colors. That's why it gets its name, the rainbow Margravia. Keep that in mind, it grows quick, it looks awesome. Definitely make sure to consider those two factors when you're planting your vivarium if that's something that you're looking for. Margravia typically doesn't do well if you just throw it in a tank and it's not humid enough so if you freshly set up a tank and it hasn't broken in it hasn't kind of cycled yet the humidity is not there the logs aren't waterlogged you know it's very difficult to get going however if you've had your tank running for a couple weeks and just misting it as normal the logs have been soaked if you're at that point you can essentially just throw it in the tank and it will grow on its own so that's going to do it for me you guys i really hope you guys enjoy the top 10 favorite vivarium plant list i would love to hear what you guys think of it down below and what your favorite plants for vivariums are in the comment section down below maybe i'll find some new plants from you guys that would be really cool so if you're into plants or you're not leave your favorite plant down below and i would love to see it so I want to thank you guys all very much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure you smash the like button. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them with your favorite vivarium plants in the comment section down below. And I reply to every single one, so keep that in mind. And of course, if you're looking for more of this kind of content, more of the reptile room, make sure you click that subscribe button and you won't miss out on a video. Thank you all very much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.